What a brand new week to bring you back, Sports Blitz. Uh, glad to have you join us on what is a fresh episode of the show. We are glad to be back on the airwaves. And certainly, with all the big stories, as always, here on Sports Blitz, uh, we'll touch base with all things sports. We'll touch base with what's happening in the uh, Miami Grand Prix. We'll, of course, uh, continuous uh, win for the world number one at the moment. We'll also touch base with the under-17 Golden Eagles. How things are faring out there in Algeria. Great stuff there. NPFL final match day approaching us. And we've got the finalists almost, almost there. We'll touch base with, of course, a big story from the Premier League. And things are heating up as far as top four basketball goes. And, of course, the final matches of the championship season. Pretty much in the waiting as well. We've got a guest in the house to bring you all those uh, big talking points, all the analysis. And we'll also uh, get your thoughts as well on Facebook Live. So thanks for joining us here on the show. We'll take a break on the show. When we come back, we'll get into all the big stories. Welcome back to Sports Pizza. Glad to have you join us. My name is Yubi. And so, doing over it. And it's a pleasure to have you join us on what is a, a great episode of Sports Pizza. Uh, we're getting into the business end of the season. And what it means is that every story now counts for a lot. And every point's even more expensive. Adeni Falana is in the studio for uh, all the talking points. Falana, it's good to have you uh, for this episode of the show. Because, look, the stories are more expensive now. The points more expensive. Mm -hmm. And every step you take now, you know, until May, June... Pretty much, you know, the ones that define the seasons. But good to have you here. Definitely. Always a pleasure, I mean, to talk sports with you. I mean, uh, to, you know, Chop it all up. Yeah, get, get a slice of, of, of a pizza of pizza. On, on the show. Isn't it? But of course, uh, welcome a lot to Sports Pizza. To all our Facebook uh, followers who have just uh, joined us. It's a pleasure to have you join us. You can actually leave a comment uh, while you're actually uh, streaming live. And we will take those comments as they come in. Just uh, keep them short and simple. That would be great to uh, see. Let's start off with uh, the under-17 Golden Eagles. And we've been following that story because, you know, we've got to nurture the younger ones, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, out there in Algeria, first game. Uh, one against Zambia, second game, lost to Morocco, third game against South Africa, was the one we needed to win. Uh, traditional six points, as they call it, we won. The good story there is that Nigeria qualified, and South Africa also qualified, but important thing is that we came back into the game after many setbacks and 1-3-2. Mm -hmm. Now we go ahead to face Burkina Faso in the next round. I mean, it's one more win to get that, you know, World that World Cup ticket. So what do you make of that? Well, uh, it's very, very important uh, the victory against South Africa because um, the way they dropped points against Morocco, I mean, they considered uh, a yeah. deflected goal, by the way, and they couldn't find a way back into the game. But then again, I think um, at a very, very young age, a, a good, um, I have like a good mentality from uh, the, the, the young lads you know, to come back in the game against South Africa and win that game really goes to two. That was very, very key for them to. Uh, to win that game yeah. because they, they were able to avoid Senegal. I don't think anything want to play Senegal in yeah. African football right now. Regardless of regardless of the competition, regardless of the, the eighth grade, yeah. you don't want to play Senegal right now. And, I, and that was my fear that they might qualify as one of the best losers but end up facing a Senegal or the host nation, uh, Algeria. But um, thankfully, they won against South Africa. A good mentality from the player to come from behind to win that game. And... Uh, Lovely to see them score more than yeah. just a goal yeah. or two goals in, in the game. Three goals to win the game. Uh, Onduka Ogbaje said now they want to you know, take a, a, a further step, not just to make it to the World Cup, because that's what everybody is expecting them now, mm. at least if you qualify for the semi-final. But of course, that has to be the first objective. Of course, Go ahead, of course. qualify for the World Cup, and the only way to qualify for the World Cup is to get to the semi-finals. Semi -final. Then from then on, there is a bit less of pressure, pressure because in the end, you know, you play all your career, you know, in the academy to get that big chance sure. at the big stage. That's you get a big stage. scout, yeah. you know, come yeah. watch you yeah. and you can trust that all the big scouts are always there at the World Cup. So this is yeah. very paramount to qualify for the World Cup. So a great win for the boys there. 3-2 uh, was the scoreline uh, when they took on uh, Morocco. Uh, South, South Africa, I beg your pardon. The former game was Morocco where we lost two goals to nil. But of course, we now progress to the quarterfinals and we take on uh, the might of uh, Burkina Faso. So, what a pleasure to have the boys, you know, moving to that next round. Let's get away from that now. Let's touch base with a uh, story still, uh, you know, tied to Nigeria because we like to wrap it all up. You know, if you slice a pizza, everything is in one place, right? So, let's touch base with the NPFL. Um, match day 17, as things currently stand. We've got just one more match day to go mm -hmm. as far as Group A goes because they've done their things expediently. Sure. 
Ben, they are still top of the group there. You get the feeling they are home and dry. But talk to me about Remo Stars who uh, sprung the surprise of the weekend. Because when we sat here last weekend and spoke about Remo, you know, going to play two, so that would be a tough game. And more so, before then, they beat Aqua United. Mm -hmm. and then Aqua United, of course, still need to, you know, win their remaining two games to qualify. I think they played Gombe uh, in one of the games there. They, they, won, and they, won the they, they won over the weekend and they played El Canemi Warriors as well. Remo Stars, who have just been returned their three points by the NFF, that's a shot in the arm. But to go to play two United and win by two goals to one, two late goals from Olamileko and Debayo, great way to tell everybody, look, you know, NFF must have, might have given us that three points back, <laughs> but we have full value for our money. Definitely. We went down one. Definitely. And uh, when um, Plato United scored in the 70th minute, I, yeah. I, I was following the game, I was like, uh, uh, because Red Monsters just streamed their game you know, yeah. on, on, on social media. YouTube. Just the way we're, you know, uh, taking a cue. We're, we're streaming live on Facebook as well. So, yeah. Uh, so, when, uh, when I when they scored the first goal, I was like, ah, Red Monsters now have to win. I told man, I expect that I know their results in the last eight games go their way, go, go, go their way. But somehow, somehow, uh, 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 had other ideas, you know, scoring in the 83rd minute and 88th minute, you know, a long laundry a strike uh, from, from outside the 18 yard box. And I knew from there on that Remo Stars would definitely do the job, uh, when, when they play at home in the last group game. But this is football, anything is possible, yeah, they can still lose, lose, lose the game. But now they know that they have the destiny in their in hands. Their and yeah, they are, they are third uh, in the group A on yeah. 30 points. You know, a win in the last game and they're, they're through to the qualifying stage. So, but I mean, I, I, yeah. all has been equal. Ben Assurance, Eneva, and Remo Stars yeah. should progress to the, to the Super Axis from, from Group A. So, I'm just sticking with my predictions regarding, regarding Group A. Oh, well, you, to be fair to you, you've got it uh, right as far as uh, so far, at the very least. The standings, uh, yeah, <laughs> Remo Stars uh, played their final game in Kenya against Quar United, and you can. You can, you can almost bet. That, that's almost like <laughs> that, <football. laughs> that's a, that's a game they're going to win. But you know, uh, big ups to Remo Stars because uh, if you followed the league for the last four or five seasons, mm -hmm. they've been consistent Definitely. with how they've done their business. Definitely. This year, they went a, a step further with their stadium. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it's a nice place to play. And if you've gone to Kenya, sure. seen the stadium, sure. it's a sure. nice place, a nice atmosphere. And the fans are always out to. Fans to, to, are to always there to cheer the team as well. So I think by and large, they deserve. To be where they definitely, are. Definitely. Aqua United, of course, will feel um, that it was that game against Remo Stars. They shouldn't yeah, have lost that game because, game. as things currently stand, you know, they themselves would have to play uh, Gombe United, you know, to um, you know have a chance. Uh, maybe Gombe will just have maybe Gombe maybe Aqua maybe United. happens, right? <laughs> but of course, uh, you mentioned that uh, Ben Insurance uh, qualified uh, Remo Stars look like they would qualify their final game. Ayimba also looked like they're home and dry as well. What about uh, the relegation uh, battle in Group A? Well, we can confirm to you that El Kanemi are down at the moment. They've got nine points. Nassau United, uh, not quite... Uh, I mean, Nassau United are down as well. You know, you know they've got 13 points. Uh, Quara have got 17, 17 points, points. And, you know, one game to go, you cannot make up those points. So, mathematically uh, down. Marizu but Quara United, you know... I tell you what. Um, Quara United are, are safe as well. You know, only two teams get relegated in the... Sure. In the in the ten group format, so that's how things currently stand. What about Lobby Stars in Group B? Mm -hmm. And you get the feeling that Group B will still, you know, be two weeks behind the schedule because of teams like Rivers Rivers United, United yeah. Doma, and of course uh, Sunshine Stars. The games are a bit uneven in that regard. So mm -hmm. Lobby Stars will qualify for all intents and purposes. Rivers United, you know, had a win. Should you know, have enough. Should yeah, have, should have, have enough. They've got qualify. three games in hand, and they're second place. So mm -hmm. it's battle between Doma, Sunshine Stars. Abia Warriors and Niger Tornadoes. That remains to be seen how that plays out. As far as relegated teams go, Dakada are pretty much you know down and out as well as uh, Wiki Torres. So, I, I, yeah. I think Doma, Doma blew their chance yeah. know, uh, over the weekend you know, by, by failing to win to win at home. So yeah. um, I think I want to put Sunshine Stars you know to qualify as the top team yeah. in in in, in, in Gubri, Gubri. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lobby Stars have done a novel try the, the campaign, yeah. This is not, not to qualify. Yeah. Uh, it would be disastrous for them not to qualify from, from that particular group. So, Lobby Stars, Rivers United, and Sunshine Stars to qualify from Group A. Great stuff there. Of course, uh, when the NPFL uh, regular season uh, ends, we head on to the top six, which is pretty much a super six, uh, as the teams uh, head on to uh, play a playoffs. 
as to determine who eventually is crowned champion of the NPFL uh, 2023 season. We're going to take a, a break on the show. When we come back, we'll touch base with what's happening across European football. And of course, uh, Arsenal continuing to put the strings on City. We're not going to let it up easily. Welcome back to the Sports Pizza. Always a pleasure to have you uh, remain with us. If you're just joining us, you are onto your best rap of football for 30 minutes. And of course, you couldn't find it better on uh, the airwaves than Sports Pizza. De Falana Didi uh, in the studio. As always, good to see you and good that we're having a great chat. Let's touch base with the Premier League because, um, what? Four matches to go, uh, three for most, you know, four if you're my United supporter. But let's start with Arsenal, who uh, won 2-0 against Newcastle. Now, I've always said, you know, you've got to beat the ones you've got to beat. And that might sound like a cliche, but Newcastle are not on Arsenal's level. And Arsenal showed them, look, what happened against City could only happen against City. We are the Arsenal, and you're not quite on our level. You probably need a couple more years to get to where sure, we are. Sure, sure. So, um, City still top of the table. Arsenal keeping them honest, make, telling them, look... If you slip up, we'll be there. Definitely, uh, Arsenal slipped up. A uh, slip up, and City, you know, took control of yeah. the league. So now Arsenal at once hunting down uh, uh, City. City. But um, I, I feel it's a bit too late, you know, mm. for for Arsenal to do that right now because uh, City they are on the usual ten games winning run. They've won ten <laughs> games in the, the last ten games in the Premier League. Yeah, and uh, so that's like thirteen or fourteen in all competitions. Yeah, and at this form, at this rate, uh, you don't want to bet against City. Yeah. winning the Premier League. But last night, I still hoping their fans are still going to church I and mean, to pray yeah. that miracle uh, should happen. Yeah. Because City now, look at the games they have left. Yeah. I think they're playing Everton away. The uh, they have a Chelsea at home. They have Brentford away. They have yeah. Brighton away. So, Arsenal are hoping that maybe, just maybe, they can drop points in two of those games. You know, and, I mean, let's do our own job. Anything is possible. Yeah, anything I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm looking at the fixtures and I'm, I'm, actually, yeah. I'm actually excited. But, so they, they, play, they play Everton away from home. Everton yeah. still needs to guarantee the, the survival. Safety, yeah. Right. They play Chelsea at home, which you'd expect them to win at the Etihad. Yeah, but course. Brighton yeah. are still, you know, fighting they're, they're still Europa. fighting for European places. places. So there's a real and genuine sense of hope there, but it's hope that kills you, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm not, I, I don't want to put my, I don't want to put my, you know, my, my mind on emotions it. on on all yeah, of that. I, I think right now, second place. But yeah, second place. but but I, I just want to ask you, and maybe you can speak for all the Arsenal fans. And if you're an Arsenal fan watching the show, you could maybe leave a comment uh, on the Sports Pizza's uh, Facebook uh, page, of course, on YouTube as well, Twitter and Instagram. The same thing at Sports Pizza. Would it not feel, would the berry not taste sweeter if City slip up? Definitely. You know, than if you went on to win it without City topping the table. That would feel like a real title, definitely, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Uh, but right now, I don't think City will bottle the league. That's not a bottle the league. Yeah. But I don't think City will bottle the league. Uh, at this but, 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 but it's going to definitely be... Yeah. Something to, to smile about, to celebrate about. Yeah. If Arsenal eventually wins the league at the end of the day. Mm. But what about... I don't, I don't see it happening. Mm. What about Manchester United, who are also... And it's also, I've also got to say this, that Arsenal and City pulling away from the rest. City have got 82 points. Uh, Arsenal have got 81, 81 points. points. The next team have got 65 points. So, Arsenal, by all intents and purposes, have had a remarkable season. And who would have thought that Arsenal would amass 81 points? Uh, just one behind yeah, City. The last time they yeah. got 8 points was, I think, 2007-2008 yeah. season. Oh, that was a yeah. That was the last time. So, yeah. uh, so, close to them. Yeah. Close so, to this, this, this is remarkable. Definitely. Man United, right? Um, two games, uh, they've lost two games now. It's the worst time. You know, we started the show saying this is the business end. And in the business end, what you need to do is close the deals. This is the worst time to pick up a bad run of form. Run of form. Last kick of the game against Brighton, they lost that game. Then the hair makes a mistake. So this is down to individual mistakes. Look sure, handball, digger. I mean, you should be catching that. United lost two games on the bounce. Uh, well, but I think United at the end of the season will still go, are still going to qualify. For I, thought you, I thought you, you changed your. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm still going to qualify for the Champions League. But then again, uh, it will delight rival fans if they bottle the top four. But I don't, yeah. I don't think they are going to do that. I mean, they have a game in hand yeah. uh, uh, against Liverpool. And um, I think they will have enough. Isn't that what Arsenal was saying? I mean, look, look at the teams. Look at the teams. Look at the teams that they're going to play before the end of the season. I, I don't think any of those teams. 
we feel confidence you know, playing against United that we can actually beat as United. I mean, Brighton, mm. West Ham, they are not push. They are not push over us when it comes to football. But when yeah. you look at the rest, no disrespect to them. You don't expect Wolves or Fulham yeah. to pick point against United. Even I don't expect Chelsea yeah. to pick a point against 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 United. I think. Man, you send Chelsea back to that default setting. I'm just when they play against each other. I'm just going to remind our viewers, uh, if you're you might not a supporter, if you're interested with the top four race, because Newcastle are pretty much safe. They're going to they're going to be there, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at the end of the season. But Man United welcome Wolves. That's their next game. They've got a week to rest. And Ten Hag did make the point that it's the first time since Christmas they've had a full week to prepare for a game. And uh, you know, so I mean. I, Excuses, I would say, but in the end, the shed is what the shadow, right? But of course, uh, after uh, Wolves at home, they play Bournemouth away from home, and of course, they welcome Chelsea in the last game of the season. Uh, rather, Fulham is the last game, they've got four games to go, so three home matches out of four. It feels like it is in their hands to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you think they can do it? Yes, I, I, I feel they can do it. Oh, yeah. The home comfort should, 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 should help them, right? You know, out of four games, three out of them, they should be able to pick. At least, at least six points. Right, six points from their from their own games. Mm. Of course, uh, Liverpool will be hoping for a different. Liverpool can only have a maximum of seventy one <laughs> points from the remaining three games. So as things currently stand, uh, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool hoping that you know Brighton, you know, not Brighton, Fulham, you know Wolves can do them a favor or two. Right, but what a good time for Liverpool to also kickstart you know their form ahead of next season. Right then, well of course let's uh, pick up the pace now. Get on to some uh, Champions League football because we've actually been waiting for this set of fixtures. Uh, Man City, Real Madrid, AC Milan versus Inter Milan. It doesn't get better. I don't think I remember a semi final pairing this even in a while. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, champions versus City, who are the best team in Europe at the moment. Uh, what about, you know, the, the, the Milan derby? Yeah, yeah. Great to see that. So, look, I seen a story where Rooney said, look, you know, Man City are not just going to beat Real Madrid, they're going to blow them away. And it's the kind of stuff that I imagine in Spain, Modric and Cole, the, the reader <laughs> like that. So a bit of nice, you know, winding up for that game. Well, talk to me about the first leg and, you know, uh, Tuesday. Look, this is a massive, massive game. Um, where does your feeling tell you this is going? You know, the heart tells you that City obviously are too good for anybody. Mm -hmm. But the head has got to remind you that, you know, Real Madrid well, are defending this, champions. I mean, we're, we're at this stage, you know, last season also, with everyone picking City yeah. out of Real Madrid. I mean, Real Madrid were not informed, uh, also, just like they're not informed, right? Even though they won the Copa del Rey yeah. over the weekend, you know. Uh, but City, with, with, with Alan and the team, and uh, Kevin De Bruyne, also informed right now. Uh, every player in the City team, they are firing on our cylinder. And you look at the Madrid team, if Benzema doesn't pick form, I mean, if Vinicius Junior doesn't find, you know, joy, you know, on the day, and the way they concede goals these days, it's, it's, it's alarming. But you now have a City team that not just scoring goals, they can also defend. And you, you wonder, well, what, what's going to happen in this game? But you always know Don Carlo Ancelotti to always come up, you know, with, with yeah. something. Something will definitely happen. Uh, but I, I think City, how good they defend, I would, would be, would be uh, what is going to work for them in this game. Mm. Scoring goals would definitely not be a problem with City, mm. but how good that they can defend you know, Real Madrid, against Real Madrid, that is what, that is what we, should, we, should, we should look at. I saw, I, saw, I saw a story, two stories from Madrid. Uh, one, that Luka Modric is back in training. I don't know how he does it. He's 39. Um, and also, I saw a picture of Vinicius Junior in his, in his home, in a gas chamber, just, you know, oxygen chamber, rather, you know, recuperating for the game. So, it'll be a nice game uh, to look forward to, that's for sure. But give me a prediction. What happens there? You know, Real Madrid are at home, first leg. Uh, I've heard people say that that's an advantage to City, that they come back to the Etihad. But Real Madrid have been here a thousand times. They know how these things work. And, um... No away goal, so that they don't have a problem with that 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 you know burden anymore. I, I, I think um, this this probably ends in a draw, you know, mm. at, at Santiago Bernabeu. I don't think um, City are going to beat Real Madrid at home. Uh, so away from home, you mean? Yeah, away from home. I mean, so I think it's it probably end in, in a draw. Mm. Right. Us, uh, AC Milan, or should I say Milan versus Inter? And if you're a football fan, if you're a football person, when you say Milan, you know it's AC Milan. And when you say Inter, Inter. it means uh, internationality. So, um, look, AC Milan, good form at the moment. Uh, Inter, good form as well. Both teams have got key players that could do some things. Mm -hmm. Edin Dzeko, Rafael Leal. You know, this game is tough to call. Maybe even tougher than the City, uh, you know, Madrid game. So uh, because you know, when it's the derby game, 
form gets thrown out of the, out, out of the window. And but Inter Milan, you, you have this feeling that Inter Milan are picking point, are picking form at the right at, time. At, at the right time, and Lukaku is back among the goals now. Lattero and he doesn't Martinez, even start. Yeah, yeah. and Latter Martinez also scoring. Then there is certain Edin Dzeko that is rolling back the years for them. And um, with Nicolo Barella in midfield and Akanchana Lobu, you have this sense, this feeling that maybe just maybe Inter. Are going to edge, you know, AC Milan in this in this one. But mm. then again, you look at AC Milan. You've done the hard job of beating Napoli in the quarterfinal, mm. who are the most informed team uh, in the Italian Serie A, uh, and you don't all the all that hard work to go down the drain mm. against against Inter Milan. And when you look at Inter Milan and AC Milan back then, you know, it's it's always a feisty uh, a, a encounter. Yeah. And so, but my head is picking Inter Milan to qualify. Over the two legs, you know, in this one. But when you have Rafael Leal and you have a, tier, a certain tier, and now there's, you know, the defense. Who scored? Who scored a brilliant goal? Oh, 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 over the week. Over the week, and you know? so I. This is also a close one, a close yeah. one. But I, right. I'm tilting towards the Milan, you know, to, to make it out, out of out of the out of the semi final. Well, of course, Inter Milan with five wins on the bounce, and like Liam mentioned, picking form at the right time. AC Milan not so uh, much in form. Uh, uh, four draws. Uh, three draws in the last five games and two wins means that they're neither here nor there. But when two players turn the style on, Tio Hernandez, Oliver Giroud, and of course, Rafael oh, Leal, yeah. you've got to say that those can be the difference uh, makers. So uh, keep an eye on those fixtures. What's the prediction for that one, first leg? I think Inter Milan should win the first leg. They should also win the second leg. It's funny because they're playing, you know, they, they say home and away, but it's the oh, same oh, stadium. That's, 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 <laughs> they win the first leg so the difference is, the difference is in the allocation of the fans, basically. So you'd have sure, more sure. Inter fans you know, in the second leg, you have more AC Milan fans uh, in the first leg. So, prediction there? I think Inter should win both legs. Both legs, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be that would be, be a nice prediction to uh, see uh, come through. If you're an uh, Inter Milan fan, Inter Milan, of course, uh, doing the semi-final for the first time in seven years. So, that's a, a great bit of a start there. Let's uh, get away from that and touch base with Napoli. It's only right we mentioned that they're now the kings of uh, Italy. Mm-hmm. Look... 33 years is what it took them to get back to this point. Sort of like what Liverpool had, you know, a couple of years ago when they won that, um, you know, Premier League title in the COVID year 2020. But, I mean, we've sang his praises more than anyone. Victor Simon, 22 uh, goals this season. And he scored in their last game. Scored the equalizer that clinched the title. So, look, he won the title for... Uh, the team, of course, you know, got a supporting cast of, you know, uh, uh, Carasvela um, and all those players, Kimi J, um, Samuel Guiza, who is very good as well. But look, what does this mean for, you know, Italian football? Four different champions in the last four, four years. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most competitive league, for sure. I, I think uh, in the Italian Serie uh, you, you can be rest assured that the areas of Juventus, you know, blowing yeah. teams away, you know, winning five, six Scudetto on the bounce. I think it has gone. Juve won it. They're followed by Inter Milan, followed by AC Milan. Now we have Napoli. But I think Napoli can actually build um, yeah. something the way Juve built, you know, back then. Maybe not win yeah. four or five, you know, in a row. I think they can retain the title mm. next season, you know. Uh, because of the way they've, they've gone about the season. Um, having sold uh, Fabian Ruiz, uh, Lorenzo Signe left, Dries Mertens also left the team, and also Koulibaly was sold to Chelsea. But they brought in players, and Luciano Spalletti has really His first with, title uh, also. Yeah, has really worked with this, this player. Napoli have been uh, nearly, nearly winning the league team. Yeah. You know, but finally, finally, they've broken that barrier. Yeah. And I think they, they're good value for money to retain uh, the Scudetto yeah. next season. Most of their players, I think, they will still keep them. Osimhen will definitely stay. For Asteria will stay at least even if for a season. Yeah. Uh, Stanislas and uh, Lubokta will also stay, and I think Kim Mije will also will, will also stay. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking yeah. at Napoli retaining the title. I've got for next season. I've got a stat on Kim Mije. He's won more aerial duels than anybody uh, in uh, the Serie A this season. He was actually brought in to replace Kulibali, who we thought was irreplaceable. But what a job he's done! And for 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 an Asian, you know, to to be in the Serie A and do that well, it's just a remarkable stuff right like yeah, yeah he's, 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 <laughs> that's for sure right then uh, away from all of that now and of course uh, in the Bundesliga is still pretty much a race there just one point separating uh, Bayern Munich and Dortmund so I uh, keep an eye on that because there could still be potential you know upsets in the final uh, match days uh, there about well, of course let's uh, wrap up the show uh, with this story from the Formula One and I know you like the races I know you like the the fast cars and yeah, all that stuff even though you've got to drive safe on uh, the roads um, here in Lagos. But tell me about Max Verstappen. Started the race in ninth, right? Had a poor qualifying, 
came back to win first place by five seconds. He's 14 points at the top of the table and on course for a second world title. What have you made of the season so far? I, I think right now, two things are involved here. Max Verstappen, I feel like others are, well, I guess are not up to my level. Yeah. Then two, Sergio Perez, his teammates looking like, what What do I need to do? I mean, we've had the same car, so how are you faster I mean, yeah, than Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, start, you start at ninth position. And somehow, somehow, you find a way to win at this one by six seconds. Yeah. And uh, um, he won the Miami Grand, Miami Grand Prix last season. And he has won it again this season. And I think there's nothing they can do to stop mm. him. I mean, this man is, is unstoppable right now. Uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, Mercedes should just give up. And let's see if we can salvage this season. Mm. Third, third position for our drivers. And maybe second position for the constructors in the rankings. Mm. Uh, but I think it's... it's um, uh, Max Verstappen started to lose uh, this season. I mm. think we are back to the era of Lewis Hamilton when Lewis Hamilton was, you know, stream rolling. His, yeah, his everybody else. Title. Yeah. So I think we are back to that era again now with, with Max Verstappen. The Formula One just serves us yeah. stuffs like this, you know, and uh, we, we can only uh, be grateful for be it. Grateful for it. Yeah. Just, let's just enjoy it. You know, don't eat on the driver. Mm. You know, it just just there's, try there's to talk to other drivers to come up. There's a popular this level. There's a popular saying, right? Um, you know, don't hate the player. You know, hate uh, the game. So uh, that's pretty much uh, our take. Um, of course, commiserations to um, uh, Nigeria's uh, Kodri Aruna, who lost the International uh, Table Tennis uh, Federation's uh, Africa final match uh, to um, you know Asa Omar of Egypt. So uh, a bit of uh, you know hearts go out to him as well. Uh, also, touch base with uh, Carlos Alcaraz, who won the Madrid Open as well. Uh, he started getting defeated. And um, so it's been a great week of sporting activity, yeah, but the big one comes this week. I tell you what, I always enjoy the dash, 30 minutes dash from the start to the finish line here on Sports Pizza. And always a pleasure to have uh, Fala and Denny. Uh, your thoughts are always very insightful, so it's good to uh, have you here. Yes. Champions League this week will be a pleasure to watch, and I'm hoping to get you back on the show to Definitely. you know, have Definitely. all your thoughts on all of that. Uh, be a part of the show as well as uh, Facebook people here currently live streaming to us. Uh, thanks for joining us. And of course, leave a comment on our Facebook page at Sports uh, Pizza. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.